Hey everyone, Vigorous Rapscallion here. As promised, I'm going to be making a little game today using just the first three chips in the list there. Just the variable, the combinator, and the comparer chip. And we're also going to be learning a bit about how to use trigger zones and how to make trigger zones. I don't like using the pre-made trigger zones that come out of the little sandbox machine over there. Uh, they don't have nearly as much functionality, so you're going to want to be making your own. So uh, a little bit about this game I'm about to make. I call it a uh, Nothing But Bucket, and it's a precision-based game. Let's go ahead and put this on Snap. So we're going to need a little platform for our bucket, because as you probably guessed, there is a bucket involved. That looks nice and bucket-sized. Now we're going to put a little backboard on here. Let's paint that upwards. It's a nice day glow orange that's, uh, that's nice and noticeable. So uh, now we're going to want a couple of trigger zones. So how trigger zones work is, let me, let me paint it first so we can get it in front of us. So now I've got this area with this sort of glowy, ephemeral thing on it, this sort of purple bit. And I'll make another one over here so you can see what they look like when they're not intersecting an object. Now what these do is they're going to detect if things are inside of them or not. In this case, it's set up to detect players, so if I were to walk through it or put my hand through it, it would trigger. Uh, in this case, we're not going to be throwing people into a bucket. The game does not have that functionality yet. It's probably coming in a later patch. They'll get there. But um, for now, we're going to be throwing a basketball. So we don't actually want this to detect players, which it's going to, by default, as you see, keeps track of players. So let's attempt to get our trigger and not our object here, which uh, I should have done the trigger first in retrospect, but there we go. There we go. Usually if you do that, if you just uh, point at it and keep on pulling up the settings menu a couple times, eventually it selects the other one, uh, which is nice. So let's have it keep track of objects. You'll see it change to green. That's so you have a nice visual cue when you're looking at your setup so you don't forget what is detecting what. Um, I'm going to get rid of that one over there because it's in my way. There we go. And let's take a look at the outputs from our trigger zones. So we've got our blue over here when exiting zone, our green total currently in zone, which is 1 which is this object there, and when entering zone zero. I just realized I should do that to freeze that object. Okay, so um, this one, pretty self-explanatory. If there's something currently in the zone, for instance, this big orange block, then it's going to uh, pulse a value when the object leaves. This is going to output the total currently in the zone. So if you just want that to be set to, say, a 1 any time that it's in the zone, that's pretty easy to do. You just do a comparison chip and make it any number greater than 0 outputs a 1. So if you don't want to keep track of the numbers, but you do want to use that as a trigger, that's how you're going to set that up. Uh, the last one is when entering zone. So that's when something is going to enter or move through the zone, or in this case, hit the backboard. Uh, one nice thing, if you make your triggers exactly the size of an object, they're still going to trigger if something hits the object. So that's convenient for games like this. Now, we're also going to need a little bucket here. We're trying to get a ball into a bucket. So let's make a little target for that. Shapes, trigger zone. Target that's going to fit roughly inside of a bucket. Oh, and uh, don't be a fool like me and make sure that you freeze things periodically or you're going to end up grabbing your whole game when you're trying to just grab, uh, say, a trigger zone. So make sure you uh, open the settings menu, hit that little freeze tool thing for your actual game environment objects. That'll make it a lot easier to work with your triggers. Now I can grab that without having to worry about grabbing this whole thing. So let's center this on the plat. Actually, let's put it a little back from center. And let's get our bucket. That's under decoration. Move over a little. There we go. So let's place this really as long as whatever's landing in the bucket is going to end up falling and triggering that since it's a basketball. 
No matter where it falls in there, it'll trigger something that size. So we don't need to be too precise with the size, but we do need to change the settings to detect an object rather than a player. Remember, by default, it will be players. Uh, we still need one little piece of game environment, which I'm going to set up before I do everything else. Uh, you're also going to want to freeze your bucket. And that's a little holder for a couple of basketballs. Uh, I like doing this rather than having them on the ground and putting them next to the player, just so that uh, you can grab them without looking. Make a kind of little rail for that. Okay, I'm going to tilt it a little bit upwards and grab myself a few basketballs. Go ahead and put that there. Okay. Then see, I almost did it right there. Like I was saying, make sure that you freeze things once you're done making them. Um, and we're going to want these to respawn after the player's thrown them at the bucket. So let's go ahead and set a tool cleanup for that. Let's put it at about seven seconds. We've got two, so that should be just fine. It's a little better to have it too long than too short. Yeah, there's nothing more frustrating than throwing a ball and seeing it about to go in, and then because the tool cleanup's too short, it just disappears and respawns before you get your point. Okay, so this game's pretty simple. Because we don't have a time limit or anything like that, uh, you want to make a game that the character has to be skilled at to win, not just one they could plug away at and eventually they'll get it. So this game has a sort of pitfall set up to it. You're trying to toss that bu uh, the ball into the bucket without hitting the backboard. So we want it to subtract a point every time the backboard is struck, and we want it to add a point every time the ball makes it into the bucket. And if you hit the backboard but you don't manage to hit the bucket, then you're just going to lose a point. So let's see what we're going to need for that. Probably going to need a variable because you need one at some point for most things then we're definitely going to need a combinator to keep track of the score. Now, I'm really terrible at tossing things in this game, so I'm going to make the winning score pretty low. I'm just going to make it 5. Let's go ahead and set that. Okay, great. So let's get our combinator set up. We're going to want to hold a value in this combinator, so remember we're going to want to just back loop that from red to green so it holds the value. Uh, then we're going to want it to add one each time an object enters this trigger. So let's do that there. Now, we don't want it to add one when something hits this, we want it to subtract one. So we're going to need another combinator. And we're going to set that to multiplication. And then we're just going to go back to our variable. And we're going to give ourselves a negative 1 and hook that up. It's from our green. There we go. And now every time this is struck, instead of pulsing a 1, it's going to pulse a negative 1. And let's connect that. Now, we could use a sign for our output, but uh, I haven't gone over those yet. So let's just use the output chip that we've been using. And let's bring that back to our command station here. So it's in the field of view. There we go. And then we're going to want something to happen uh, after our win state. And we want that state to be at five points. So we're going to set up a comparer to check that. Let's actually put it underneath here. So we've got our five on the variable that we input earlier. So that's going to be what it's checking against. Then we've got our score. 
which is going to be our input. But let's say something goes wrong, the ball bounces in the bucket, and now your scores six instead of five and congratulations you now have no way to win the game so uh, there's an easy way to fix that we're going to want to make this anything that is greater than the uh the uh integer on the right side of the equation so as long as this is over five it's going to trigger an event and let's just have that trigger say a message over here And tools connect. Now let's customize the message. Uh, modify. So uh, we want to congratulate people on their bucket prowess. So let's go ahead and put you are a bucket. Master. Congratulations. Good job. Okay, so now we've got our win state message set, and let's see if we can indeed be bucket masters. Get rid of that. Okay, um, grab a basketball, and so far our score is zero. You'll notice I'm very close to this bucket. That's because I'm very, very bad at this game everything works. Oh, I did a brief cut a second ago. Let me just tell you what I did in that time. I lied to you earlier. Uh, I was having some hit detection problems with that trigger zone. So all I did was I went over here and I moved it a little bit out from the backboard. And let's see if that works. All right, cross your fingers. And no. Oh, so see, I hit the backboard, but I got it into the bucket. So those two scores negated, and I still have zero. The object is to hit the bucket without hitting the backboard. Oh, and I hit the backboard without the bucket. Now I'm at negative one. I am not a bucket master. All right, well, I'm not going to force you to watch me struggle any longer. Let's just make sure that our game's win state actually outputs. So let's just go ahead and cheat. And uh, there's no way to stop me from doing this in the game right now, but uh, I'll be coming back to this game after I do some more tutorial videos on more advanced chips. And we'll get into how you can fix that, how you can keep your players standing in one place in order to play the game. But let's just see if our simple setup we have so far works. One point, two points. See, this this was the secret the whole time to being a bucket master. Oh, look at that. I am a bucket master because it was greater than five. Now, I just noticed I actually have it set to six because, like a fool, I use the greater than rather than the greater than or equals to. So I'm getting some sway with my hands. So let's go ahead and make that... Not sure why that's happening. Greater than or equal to. And now it should output any time there's a 5. I also set that to reset your score um, if you uh, do trigger that event. So every time you make it to 5, it's also going to reset the score, which is going to reset the game. You can go back here and try and become a bucket master again. Uh, so, as you've probably noticed, as much as I hate to admit it, bucket master is far from a perfect game. Uh, it'd be nice if, say, it didn't subtract a point every time you hit the backboard but didn't make it into the bucket. That make might make the game a little less frustrating and make it so with perseverance you could make it through. Uh, right now you could potentially just keep on getting a negative score, which I'm pretty sure is what would have happened to me. Um, it would also be nice if we have the game like that to put pl pressure on the player in a different way. If you can just keep on plugging away and make it, maybe there should be a time limit. Now, right now, with the chips I've gone over so far, we can't really do that. But uh, in my next tutorial video, I'm going to be going over delay chips and timer chips. And just with those two, we should be able to make a much more complicated game. So uh, stay tuned if you're enjoying the videos. Thanks again for watching, and have a nice day.